Part of this video is sponsored by Hexclad. It might be a freshly baked flatbread covered in a meaty tomatoey sauce, but don't you dare calling it a pizza because it's certainly not. We are talking about lahmacun, a Turkish specialty traditionally baked in a wood-fired oven and topped with fresh, tangy chopped veggies. It is a street food staple not just in Turkey, but also in a lot of places with a large Turkish population like Berlin. And I've been craving this thing for weeks now. And while I could always go out and get some fresh lahmacun, around the corner that would be too easy wouldn't it today I'll show you my somewhat untraditional but also incredibly delicious recipe for making some of the tastiest lahmacun at home and sure a lot of people might want to make lahmacun in a fancy pizza oven but don't worry guys I got you because there's also a much easier way to make it in a humble pan and a lid and there might even be some advantages to doing it this way but we're getting ahead of ourselves so let's just start from the beginning so at its core a lahmacun is a very thinly rolled out piece of dough over which skilled lahmacun masters spread a very thin layer of pepper and tomato seasoned meat sauce. And I have added a few tweaks to this sauce that in my opinion make it truly irresistible. And you know what? Making it is actually pretty simple. Let me show you how. We start with sweet red peppers. Trim the ends and very roughly chop them. The beauty of this recipe is that everything just goes into a food processor which makes it quite straightforward. Now to boost that paprika flavor we will add some sriracha or any any other hot sauce you like. While a more traditional recipe would use Turkish pepper paste, sriracha works really well for me. To add some tomato flavor, we will use a few spoons of concentrated tomato paste. Next, peel and roughly chop an onion and throw that in. Then crush a few cloves of garlic and add those as well. And now for my somewhat unexpected secret weapon, Kalamata olives. I accidentally bought unpitted ones, so yeah, I had to pay the price and put in a bit of effort to get them where I need them to be, but trust me, it was worth it. The olives add a savory meaty depth that is just amazing and this actually inspired me to also add some pickled peppers again not very traditional at all but incredibly tasty I also had a big green chili in my fridge so I threw that in but that's optional and now it's time for some spices ground cumin also known as the essence of sweat is a must I also like adding some smoked paprika a little freshly ground coriander seeds for a refreshing zesty note and dried oregano for a floral kick. Then grab some flat leaf parsley, pick the leaves and tender stems and add that too. Now it's time to blitz everything in the food processor. Scrape the sides if needed. And I actually forgot to season with salt before, so I did that now and then I realized I had some fresh mint around, which I wasn't sure whether to add or not, but in the end I was like, why not? And I definitely didn't regret that, it was good. After another 30 seconds or so in a food processor, you get this very nice, slightly chunky sauce and that means it's time to add the meat the easiest thing is to go for ground beef which is what I used but if you have access to minced lamb or if you want to make your own that's actually even better and of course you could also use plant-based mints after about a minute or so of processing you get this almost emulsified somewhat smooth meat paste and if you know what lahmacun smells like you'll recognize it already now we basically just have to make a simple dough and roll out our lahmacun which actually got a little more interesting than I expected it, and we'll get to all of that after a quick word from this video's sponsor, Hexclad. Question, do you have that one go-to set of cookware? I always used to wrestle between the convenience of non-stick, the heavy-duty quality of cast iron, or the professional performance of stainless steel. But I finally found the one that checks all the boxes and that is Hexclad. I had seen their ads all over the internet and when they sent me a set, I was super excited to finally try them out. And let me tell you, I was not disappointed. I can finally sear meat at high temperatures as well as cook delicate dishes without even the slightest hint of stickage all in one glorious piece of cookware and what makes me the happiest is I can finally use metal tools and not have to worry about damaging the nonstick surface let me tell you a hex clad cookware isn't just built for convenience it's also made to last a lifetime they back this up with a lifetime warranty but trust me once you get your hands on one of their pieces you'll know it's crafted to withstand the test of time do yourself the favor and check out what hex clad has to offer find your all-in-one forever cook at Hexclad and get 10% off at hexclad.com slash andong. That's hexclad.com slash andong and don't forget to use my promo code, you guessed it, 
undone. Hexclad is the cookware Gordon Ramsay uses and if it's good enough for him, it's probably good enough for us, don't you think? Bon appetit, let's eat with Hexclad's revolutionary cookware. Thank you Hexclad for sponsoring this video. Okay, back to our lahmacun. We have our topping already, so let's make some dough. Lahmacun is traditionally made from a yeasted dough, sometimes enriched with eggs or milk. But in my case, I just did a simple water-based one. The important addition here is some oil, which makes the dough a little easier to work with and also results in a crunchier crust later on. Just mix everything together and let it rest for about 90 minutes or until it has more than doubled in size. Divide into five to six equally sized little balls, which you can then dip in some flour and roll out with a rolling pin. You really want them nice and thin though, that's a hallmark of lahmacun. Once your dough is ready, add about a tablespoon of filling on top for the dough and using slightly damp hands, spread it to cover the dough evenly. Now, if you wanted to closely mimic the traditional method, you'd use a pizza oven. The lahmacun will actually only take a minute or two in there and will bubble up nicely, coming out very close to the traditional one that inspired this recipe. I was actually really happy with how they turned out. But wait, what are you saying? You are not a food content creator and you don't have a pizza oven at home? Okay, so as I promised, there is a much simpler way and in good old Andong fashion, let's break some rules. So for my easy home style workaround, start with some flour. To this, add baking powder and salt and whisk them in. But now instead of water, we are going to add another liquid and that is, bear with me, non-alcoholic beer. Okay, I know we're using non-alcoholic beer, but this still feels very haram, so let me explain for a second, okay? The beer serves a triple purpose. Firstly, it adds some yeasty aroma to a dough that otherwise is lacking this flavor completely. Secondly, the sugars in the beer help the crust to brown and crisp up nicely later on. And lastly, the acidity of the beer helps to relax the gluten and make the dough a little easier to work with. At least that's my theory. So add your beer along with a bit of oil as we did before. Mix everything well and then give it a quick knead for just a few minutes. Since there's no yeast involved, we don't need to let this dough rise. Though I would recommend resting it for at least 15 minutes to fully hydrate and relax. Then just as we did before, divide into smaller balls, dust with flour, roll out very thinly, top with a healthy dollop of our meat paste and spread that out. But when it comes to baking, this time we're not using an oven, we're using a simple non-stick pan. First get it somewhat hot on medium heat and you definitely, definitely need a lid. The reason is that the lid basically turns our pan into a mini oven, trapping heat and steam and cooking our filling. And while this method is a bit slower, about five to seven minutes per lahmacun, this is actually exactly the time we need to prepare pair the next one, so it's actually kind of genius. And yes, these guys look a little bit different than the ones we made in the pizza oven, obviously lacking some of that top crisp, but the bottom is actually looking fantastic. So which one of those tastes better? Well, that's an interesting question. Top your finished lahmacun with some quick pickled red onions with sumac. By the way, if you want a recipe for those, let me know in the comments. I might follow up with one. Add some fresh leaves of parsley and a healthy squeeze of lemon. You can eat these guys any way you like. You can tear off pieces or roll them up like a wrap. That's completely up to you. We tried these side by side and believe it or not, I actually preferred the ones from the pan. I'm not sure if it was the super crispy bottom or the beer enriched dough, but something about this method just works. So yeah, if you're up for the challenge, definitely give this recipe a try and let me know what you think. I'd actually be super curious to hear if you also enjoyed the quick dough as much as we did. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'm gonna see you in the next one.